Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump face off tonight in their second debate. Trump is resisting calls to get out of the race after lewd comments he made about women surfaced in a video. Plus, rescue on the rail. A train carrying 600 people derails near New York City. And the Eagles get back to business, returning from the bye week to take on the Lions today in Detroit. Jamie Apote talks to a Birds player who will have plenty of fans in the stands. But we begin with what is left of Hurricane Matthew. The storm's northern bands are moving through south and east of Philadelphia this morning. Some of the rain has been steady, lasting all night long. And a wind advisory is also in effect along the coastline. Looking live right now at Cape May, we are not expecting to get the hurricane force winds and torrential rain that hit the south. It is now 7 o'clock on this Sunday morning. Matthew dumped record flooding on North Carolina. At least 10 people died when that storm plowed through the south this weekend. More than a foot of rain left some towns partially underwater. This morning, rescue crews are going home to home looking for people who might be trapped. As predicted, we appear to have dodged the worst of Matthew, but still some rain in our forecast today. Yeah, the roads are wet. Meteorologist Chris Sauer is tracking the rain in our area and the remnants of Matthew. Good morning, Chris. All right, good morning to you guys. Yeah, some of the rain is coming down at a pretty good clip this morning. I know driving into work. Uh, it was terrible for me coming in from South Jersey. The roads, lots of ponding on the roads, rain coming down so hard that it was difficult to even see, especially with the car in front of you kicking up the spray. So just allow yourself some extra time this morning. You can see the heavy rain stretching all the way from New England southwestward into Richmond, Virginia. There have been a few changes with the path and the, the projected track of uh, what was once Hurricane Matthew. Subtle, but just enough to kind of bring this shield northward into the heart of the viewing area. So here's the center of the storm now. This is what's left over of Matthew. It's become extra tropical. It's no longer a hurricane. It's more or less just a, a large overall system, something that you would see during the winter months. Instead of this storm, you remember yesterday, and actually for the last several days, the storm was forecasted to do a little turn back towards the south and affect Florida and the Bahama Islands again later this week. Well, instead of that happening, now, the storm said, oh, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go like this. And it's going to make a beeline out to sea towards Bermuda, actually. But that subtle change was enough to lift this shield of moisture all the way northward. Now we're seeing the banding taking place in South Jersey, actually as far west as the Delaware River. So that's part of the reason why we're seeing the intense rain at this point. And you can see the banding all the way here, running parallel to the Delaware River from Florence all the way down into Wilmington, Delaware, Philadelphia, reporting moderate rain, Riverside, Cherry Hill, all areas uh, in in this circled area here reporting the moderate to heavy rain. Now, the farther west you go, you're just too far west to uh, feel the effects of the storm system right now. Downingtown, Exton, it's not doing anything out there. And what will happen later this afternoon, as the storm continues to pull away, it'll take all the rain and cloud cover along with it. Maximum sustained winds. So the hurricane force winds are in this red shade here. You can see how small that is. These are tropical storm force winds in the orange shade and breezy conditions in that yellow shade. What will happen here during the late morning hours is, again, that storm, whoop, let's go back real quick that storm will just work its way right out to sea and not in fact uh, not impact the immediate Philadelphia area so forecast for today lots of clouds this morning periods of rain some of it heavy at times damp roadways and then we'll see brighter conditions later this afternoon turning breezy and much cooler highs today only around 63 degrees one o'clock 60 three o'clock 63 and then by five o'clock 62 so it's kind of miserable out there right now but the afternoon promises to be much much better Alicia all right, Chris, thank you. Visit our website, 6abc.com, to monitor the path of Hurricane Matthew anytime. Our interactive hurricane tracker can show you current wind speeds and where the storm is expected to go next. Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. But you have but no in plan. Show incomes have increased. That was round one. Tonight, it's round two of the presidential debates with the election just a month away. Donald Trump goes into this second debate tonight with new opposition from within his own party following those lewd comments about women that were caught on tape. Those remarks have caused some top-ranking Republicans to call for his removal as the GOP's nominee. Senator John McCain is on that list of Republicans distancing themselves from his campaign. Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, ex-presidential candidate Carly Fiorina, and Arnold Schwarzenegger are also in the group. Now, going into that debate, the 6ABC Franklin and Marshall 
poll shows Hillary Clinton expanding her lead here in Pennsylvania. Here's a breakdown of the numbers. She leads Donald Trump by nine points, 47 to 38 percent among likely voters. But the margin of error is plus or minus about six percentage points. So the bottom line is Pennsylvania is very much up for grabs. ABC's Karen Travers has more on the Trump tape fallout and tonight's debate in Missouri. It's the showdown in St. Louis, a town hall debate that could be make or break for Donald Trump after a bombshell Friday night. A lewd and graphic recording from 2005, first reported by the Washington Post. The billionaire caught on a hot mic with TV host Billy Bush talking about an attempt to sleep with a married woman. I moved on her and I failed. I'll admit it. Whoa. I did try. She was married. Trump later brags that his status as a celebrity gives him a free pass to grope women. Grab him by the <laughs> I could do anything. Hillary Clinton tweeted, this is horrific. We cannot allow this man to become president. Republicans, including Mitt Romney, members of Congress, and the chair of the RNC, condemning Trump's comments. House Speaker Paul Ryan said in a statement he was sickened by what he heard. A planned event on the campaign trail with Ryan and Trump didn't happen. Well, Clinton got a solid bounce out of the really first debate. What I thought the first one went pretty well. She now has a five-point lead over Trump in one national poll. That same poll before the first debate had Trump on top. Is this Trump's last chance to turn things around? Forget debate prep. I mean, give me a break. Do you really think that Hillary Clinton is debate prepping for three or four days? Hillary Clinton is resting. Okay. Trump's campaign insists he has the advantage with this town hall format. He can focus directly on the audience and not engage as much with Clinton. But one potential pitfall tonight, half the questions are coming from the audience. He can't get mad at Jane Q. Citizen like he gets mad at us. That was Karen Travers reporting, and you can watch ABC News live coverage of the presidential debate. That starts at 9 o'clock tonight and, of course, is followed by Action News at 11. And you can get breaking alerts from the campaign trail by downloading our free 6 ABC News app. It's available right now on the Apple and Google Play stores. Developing overnight, the search is on for killers who shot a young man right in front of his mother. It happened overnight in the 2100 block of 3rd Street in Chester. Police say several suspects barged into an apartment. A 20-year-old man was inside with his mother. One of the suspects shot the man several times, killing him. His mother was not injured, and at this point, the motive behind this attack is unclear. Back to our coverage now of Hurricane Matthew. It is being blamed for at least 10 deaths in the United States, including two people in North Carolina swept away in their car by floodwaters. This morning, the storm is slowly moving out to sea as it dumps more than a foot of rain on North Carolina, flooding homes and businesses 100 miles inland. Dozens of people in the state had to be rescued from their cars. Meanwhile, South Carolina's governor warned her residents it was still too dangerous to return to their homes. What I am going to ask for you is patience. Most injuries, most fatalities occur after a storm because people attempt to move in too soon. Do not plan on going back home today or tomorrow. The storm has knocked out power to more than a million people in the southeastern section of the U.S. Some residents have returned to their Florida homes to find them destroyed. And things are much worse in Haiti. The storm is being blamed for killing at least 470 people in just one hard-hit district of that country. We are following breaking news for you this morning. Police have arrested the man they say shot and killed two police officers in Palm Springs, California. Overnight, police saluted their twin caskets at this procession while it was underway. Other officers were surrounding that home and capturing the shooter. That gunman opened fire while speaking with the officers who were responding to a family dispute. One of the officers killed had just returned from maternity leave. The other was a veteran of the force. I am awake in a nightmare right now. That, that's, that's me, but you know what? As a chief of police for this police department, I got to step forward and stay focused. I got some very qualified managers here. And of course, that arrest coming this morning, a third officer was wounded in this shooting. Police say that shooter was known to them. And again, today is behind bars. 
The second commuter train crash in the New York City area in 10 days has injured almost a dozen people. The eastbound Long Island Railroad train derailed just east of New Hyde Park, New York at about 9 last night. 11 passengers were taken to hospitals. None of them appear to have life-threatening injuries. About 600 people were on board the commuter train, which came out of Penn Station. And rail service at the transit station in Hoboken, New Jersey, will partially resume. Tomorrow. Officials are still investigating the New Jersey transit crash that killed one woman and injured more than 100 other people. And a new rule is going to be in place. It requires the conductor to join the engineer whenever a train pulls into the terminal. The train was traveling twice the speed limit before it hit the station. There's so much more to come for you on Action News this Sunday morning. New overnight, a family scrambles to get out of their burning home in South Jersey. Celebrating Philadelphia's Italian pride. A peek at today's parade in South Philadelphia. Chris. And it a light to moderate rain falling in the city of Philadelphia this morning with moderate to heavy rain falling for areas south and east. I'll let you know when it all clears. And we've got cooler conditions to talk about in the AccuWeather 7 day forecast. It's coming up next. We probably say. Welcome back on this Sunday. You can see rain on the camera there. It is 713, 62 degrees. Sky 6 AG taking a live look at the Commodore Berry Bridge. The roads are wet out there too. There was an accident on the Schuylkill on my way in, so be careful if you're headed out this morning. Yeah, part of the problem is uh, a lot of ponding on the roads. Mm -hmm. there, there wasn't too many uh, people on the roads first thing this morning. Rain's coming down heavily, so you've got all that water on the roadways. Now we're seeing some patchy fog this morning. The leftover rain, which is still coming down pretty heavily at times, and um, a little bit of patchy uh, fog starting to develop as well. So let's flip it over to the radars and show you uh, the very latest here. These are the outer edges of what was once Hurricane Matthew lifting as far north now as the immediate Philadelphia area. It all started yesterday afternoon in the form of just a couple of showers and then it got steadier and steadier and steadier as the day progressed and then of course the heavy stuff moved in overnight while most of you were sound asleep. So here we go. We're zoomed into South Jersey. Here's Glassboro. This is Delaware right here. We have that flash flood warning in effect for Kent County until 845. They've already picked up two inches of rain, expecting at least another inch out of this. You can see the heavy rains along the Jersey Shore from Atlantic City all the way down to Cape May. And then another band here running parallel to the Delaware River from Trenton all the way down to Wilmington. Take a look at some of these rainfall totals right now. And again, this is within the last 24 hours. Not too bad in Philadelphia, close to an inch. Actually, the city of Philadelphia is only reporting about four-tenths of an inch. So it's really South Jersey where you're starting to pick up the heavier totals. Elmer, in between Elmer and Millville, 1.3. Vineland, same thing. And then watch what happens down here. Middletown and Delaware, 2.6. Dover, 2.4. South of Dover, more than four inches of rain. The Fortescue Gandy's Beach area, more than two. Sea Isle City, Avalon, Stone Harbor, that area two and a half and then you get into Cape May and the villas and all of a sudden we're seeing three, four, four and a half inches of rain. This is all within just the past 24 hours. So you can imagine the kind of rain that those folks saw down to the south where the hurricane came on shore. This is just within 24 hours here. So impressive rainfall totals. Again, we do have a lot of ponding on roadways. Take it easy first thing this morning. Later this afternoon, skies are actually going to brighten up a bit. Everything will start drying out with a gusty breeze, and the afternoon looks really, really nice, believe it or not. So here's the wider view. Again, here's the remnants of what was once Hurricane Matthew, the heaviest rains indicated by the yellows and the oranges. The center of the storm is right off the coast of Cape Hatteras and working due east. It'll pull all this moisture along with it as the day wears on. So flood warning continues for southern Kent County here. It's until 845 this morning. There's Dover, so we're a good 20 to 30, 40 miles to the south. Here's Riverview. Here's Harrington. And the the idea in this area here is just to watch those areas that typically flood during a heavy rain event. The uh, low-lying areas, poor drainage areas, smaller creeks and streams. We've seen a lot of water here within the last, let's say, six to ten hours. The remnants of Matthew continuing to work its way out to sea. You can see it lifting a little bit farther to the north, but the center of the storm is situated right here. There's Cape Hatteras, so the storm center is here, and it will continue to pull east uh, later this afternoon. Take a look at some of these uh, peak wind gusts over the last couple of days. Ever since the 
storm started, recorded wind gusts of 155 miles per hour in Baracoa, Cuba, made landfall on the outer edges, the far southeastern tip of Cuba at 155 miles per hour. That's a Category 5. Freeport, Bahama, again, these are gusts. Uh, Freeport in the Bahamas, 120 miles per hour. Cape Canaveral in Florida saw 107 mile an hour wind gusts with this storm. Daytona Beach, 90 miles per hour. Jacksonville, 87 miles per hour. And a lot of that area picked up a good 5 to 10 inches of rain. On top of that, some locations saw as much as 17 inches of rain with this storm system. So for us, really, this is just a glancing blow. Even though it lifted farther to the north than it should have, or at least than it was originally predicted to, we're really dodging a huge bullet here. Future tracker by 10 a.m., still a few showers for South Jersey, the Delaware Bay region. We're dry north and west. There's your cloud line right here. The clearing line will continue to march east during the day. By 5 o'clock, it's sunny for two-thirds of the viewing area. Still cloudy for some of those shore points. So forecast for today, morning rain becoming windy with some afternoon sunshine. Expect a high around 63. Lots of clouds this morning. Damp periods of rain by lunchtime. That's when you start to see some peaks of sun. 3 o'clock temperature 63 by 5 o'clock 62. Overnight tonight, look at these numbers. 40 degrees, outlying suburbs 40 46 for Center City, mainly clear and breezy. The exclusive AccuWeather seven day forecast. Here we go. Once we get past today, looks great. Columbus Day, 63 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Tuesday, sunny and nice with a high of 65. Wednesday looks good. We're still in the 60s, 67 degrees. Thursday's tranquil with a high of 72. And look at this Friday, Saturday. I mean, yeah. the beat goes on. More sunshine and temperatures in the 60s. Gorgeous fall week. It really mm -hmm. is. Maybe I should do my pumpkin picking next weekend. <laughs> or tomorrow, the next time you have off. I mean, the whole week looks good. All right. You don't off. have off, do you? What does that mean? Well, you work seven days a week, don't you know? That's because I'm probably Just the only one week. off on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you go pumpkin picking, bring one back for us. All right. Turning to the Eagles this morning. They're back from the bye, 3-0, and and they have a date with Detroit this afternoon. The last one, as you remember, didn't end so well. Today it's payback time for the Birds, who got crushed in Detroit last Thanksgiving. And that loss began the Eagles spiral, which ended with the firing of Coach Chip Kelly. Fast flash forward 11 months. The Eagles now have a new coach, a new quarterback, and they're in first place. Jamie Apodi will have a report from Detroit in 15 minutes. And of course, you can get a recap of all the big plays tonight at 1135 on Action News Sports Sunday. We'll be right back. Action News. It's more stories. Health check, Hurricane Matthew could put a temporary halt to the reproduction of mosquitoes carrying the Zika virus. Initially, after a big storm, the mosquito population tends to drop. Many adult mosquitoes get washed away by heavy rain. Also, flooding washes away mosquito larvae from places like tires and flower pots with previous standing water. Now, to date, there have been 141 cases of Zika reported in Florida since the end of July. Patients at McGee Rehabilitation Hospital in Center City received a visit from a gold-winning Paralympian. Michelle Conkley is fresh from Rio de Janeiro with four Paralympic medals. She returned to McGee where she fought back from a severe spinal cord injury after falling five stories out of a window. Permanent weakness in her legs made her eligible for Paralympic swimming. Michelle plans to start medical school next fall. And to let you know that you inspire me to be a better teacher and you make me want to come to school every day. Out of all the other people. Yes, you. Yes, you. There you go. Special. You should. You, you are special. This video has my heart. This is a video between teachers and their students at a high school in Kansas City, Missouri, and it is going viral. Jamie McSparron, who's in charge of a program for at-risk students, issued a challenge to her fellow teachers. She asked them to tell an individual student that they are important and they are appreciated. The six minute video showing dozens of interactions has been seen more than five million times. You know, most of the time it's students telling their teachers how much they mean to them, how much they inspire them. This kind of flipped the script and let the teachers tell their students how special they are. It's really wonderful to see. We'll be right back. Sunday morning, you're looking at the remnants of what was once Hurricane uh, Matthew. This is the water vapor image, and what you're seeing here, the reds, the yellows, oranges, that's dry air working its way in on the backside of the storm. All the high dew points, the moist air, the heavy rains, that's in here where you're seeing the whites and the greens. So the center of the storm is right there. Remember, the winds blow in a counterclockwise fashion, just like this around the storm as it works its way out to sea. So eventually what will happen is we will work this dry air into the Delaware and the Lehigh Valley. 
valleys as the storm moves farther and farther off the coast. That'll happen later this afternoon. So what looks miserable right now this morning in your neighborhood will actually look much brighter and better once we get past lunchtime. There was a huge change overnight in the uh, projected path of this storm. Remember, most of the forecast models actually took the storm like this and wrapped it back around, getting closer to the Bahamas and Florida again. Watch what these spaghetti plots are doing now. Watch the sun change. Look at this. It's all the way due east. It's all the way north of Bermuda now, and that subtle change was enough to get the rain all the way north into southern New England overnight. Some of the heaviest actually fell while you were asleep. Some locations picked up between four and five inches of rain on the Del Marva. So some of the highlights with Matthew, it was the fifth hurricane this season. Baracoa, Cuba picked up 155 mile an hour wind gusts. Savannah, Georgia, nearly 18 inches of rain. And I-95, the southern part of I-95 in South Carolina closed in both directions. It's now open now, but that's how how severe some of the flooding was. Nidia? Chris, thank you. Sports Now, the Eagles go for 4-0 today in Detroit. Deuces Rogers and Jamie Apodi are on the Birds Beat. Rain is now drenching us too. It is 7.30 on this Sunday morning. Meteorologist Chris Sowers joins us with another preview of the AccuWeather forecast. Got to be careful on the roads out there. You do. So far, so good. The rain, it's coming down moderately, but we really haven't had too many issues with flooding or even accidents or anything like that. So we're doing okay. It's just a beneficial rain. The heaviest by far is still to the south, and it will stay there later on across the southern portions of the Del Marva, uh, southern Sussex County, from that point south into the Del Marva, let's say Virginia Beach. That area there, that's the area that'll pick up the heaviest rain. So here's Storm Tracker 6 Live set it in motion for you. You can see the yellows here extending northward all the way up into Philadelphia and just south of New York City. We're going to make a couple of zooms here. And note that we have two bands taking place, one running uh, from Trenton southward into Wilmington, right along the uh, Delaware River, and then another band in South Jersey from Surf City South into uh, Wildwood and Cape May. So here we go. We're zoomed into the Philadelphia area first. Jenkintown right along Route 1, uh, crossing over the Delaware River into Riverside. You can see the heavy rain indicated by the yellows and the oranges here. There's Route 30 in Camden and Burlington counties. It's going to be a slow go. Lots of ponding on the roads. Here's Philadelphia still reporting moderate rain. And the farther south and west you go, getting into Wilmington, same thing. Moderate to occasionally heavy rain is falling. There's Route, one, there's route 30 and here's 206. So it's really the steadiest is from 206 uh, westward into the city of Philadelphia. Next zoom is going to take us a little bit farther to the south, right along the Jersey Shore from Surf City all the way down through Atlanta. Atlantic City into Sea Isle City and Wildwood and Cape May. Same thing, moderate to occasionally heavy rain falling right along the Garden State Parkway. Route 9, slow go. Here's Route 47 here. This is uh, Delcy Drive uh, heading into Cape May County. Same thing, lots of ponding on roadways, even Fortescue reporting moderate to occasionally heavy rain. Those areas have seen anywhere from two to as much as four inches of rain within the last, let's say, 12 to 18 hours or so. So forecast for today, AccuWeather says Morning rain, lots of clouds expected, maybe even some patchy fog. A miserable morning around the Delaware and the Lehigh Valleys. But then we'll see skies brighten up this afternoon, turning windy and cooler. Highs topping out in the 60s. Nidia? All right, Chris, thank you. The second presidential debate is tonight in St. Louis. Donald Trump vowing not to quit the race. On Twitter, he wrote he will, quote, never drop out of the race and never let my supporters down. Trump has remained with aides in Trump Tower in New York City since the release of a 2005 video. In the video, Trump makes lewd remarks about women. I moved on her like a <laughs> but I couldn't get there, and she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her, she's now got the big phony <laughs> who knows me, knows these words. Trump has apologized for the remarks, but several big names in the Republican Party say what he has done so far is not enough. They have voiced their horror over Trump's remarks on the video and have either renounced their support for him or called on him to do much more. One Republican who continues to support Trump, though, is former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. There is nothing that is going to cause his dropping out. That's a wishful thinking of the Clinton campaign and those people who have opposed him for a long time. Rebuild China. Now, Trump's own running mate, Mike Pence, said he could neither condone nor defend the 2005 remarks by Trump. And now we turn to a new challenge facing the Clinton campaign. Democratic Senator Bernie Sanders says his support for Hillary Clinton remains strong despite the release of some newly released and leaked 
Clinton campaign emails. On Friday, WikiLeaks published a number of hacked emails from the Clinton campaign, revealing comments she made in private Wall Street speeches. She received more than $600,000 for those three speeches. In one of them, she tells Wall Street investors that there was a need to have, quote, both a public and private position on certain issues when dealing in backroom discussions. You can watch ABC News live coverage of the presidential debate at 9 o'clock tonight. It is followed by Action News at 11. And for more on the race for the White House and this second presidential debate, tune in to This Week with George Stephanopoulos. That begins at 1030 right after Action News. And when it comes to the November general election, just a reminder, the deadline to register to vote in Pennsylvania is this Tuesday. In Delaware, it's October 15th. And in New Jersey, the final day is October 18th. 735, the U.S. military is now getting aid to Haiti, which got slammed hard by mass. Matthew, hundreds of people died. Action News reporter Bob Brooks has more on what's being done locally. Entire towns have been wiped out. Some towns in Haiti can't even be accessed right now. The roads, bridges, they've all been washed away. Also, the power is out. Not expected to be restored anytime soon. A lot of people are not able to, to contact anyone because there is no electricity in those areas. That's Gilda Jean-Louis, a local Haitian leader with the Elise Joseph Foundation. She and some others are planning a relief effort. Hurricane Matthew ripped through southwest and north Haiti. And some of the stories she heard from a friend are heartbreaking. He heard a story of um, a parent who was holding a, a five-year-old, the hands of a five-year-old. The wind came and took the child away and they, they don't know when they're going to find that body. Jean-Louis says she expects the estimated death toll of 900 to dramatically rise. She fears many people had no means to prepare and have been covered by crumbling buildings. You talk about people who, who had very few items and felt that those things were important for them to protect, thinking that maybe, you know, it's just a simple rainstorm that was just going to pass through. Right now, the U.S. Navy's Iwo Jima and 500 Marines are on their way with supplies, as food is expected to be a shortage now and sadly in the future. Matthew has reportedly ruined the major agricultural hubs in the region. We imagine that already prices for food have gone up in the entire nation because we're talking about the effects of seawater in, on the far, in the farmland. Now where I'm at right now is the Ebenezer Haitian Baptist Church. Local leaders are meeting for relief efforts next Saturday at 4 p.m. If you want to help, you need to be here at that time. For now reporting in Feltonville, Bob Brooks, Channel 6, Action News. New this morning, a fire in South Jersey has badly damaged a home and sent one firefighter to the hospital. The action cam was at the scene at the 1000 block of Oakwood Avenue in Gloucester Township, Camden County. This fire broke out just after three this morning. When firefighters arrived, flames were shooting through the second floor. All of the residents managed to get out safely. It took about 30 minutes to get this fire under control. Investigators are now looking for the cause. The firefighter who was injured is being treated for heat exhaustion and it is said to be in good condition. Good news there. Yeah. There's still much more to come on Action News for this Sunday. An award-winning country music singer and songwriter is going to take the stage in Philadelphia. 6ABC Loves the Arts has a preview. And Sky 6 HD taking a live look for you in Wilmington, Delaware. This rainy, kind of dreary Sunday morning. It's 738. Meteorologist Chris Sowers says the day is going to improve. He'll have all the details coming up in the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Look, I'm just lucky enough. Morning. Chris Sowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need, you know, it's funny. Just a couple weeks ago, remember we were talking about how badly, how desperately we needed some rain? Yeah. <laughs> we don't need any Congratulations, rain there. everyone. <laughs> Let's get you outside. Good day to sleep uh, in. Yeah, it really is. Good day to kind of just take it easy, have an extra cup of coffee, and kind of sit on the couch and just relax next couple of hours here. Now, things are going to improve later this afternoon. We will see the return of some sunshine, but the morning hours are going to be a little damp and uh, a little wet with periods of rain. There's Double Scan Live. Let's zoom in to the Philadelphia area. We've got a couple bands that are taking shape. Now, these are the outer edges of what was once Hurricane Matthew. One band running parallel 
to the Delaware River from Trenton all the way down into Wilmington and actually just south of Baltimore and D.C. And then there's this band here from Surf City all the way down into Atlantic City, Wildwood and Cape May. Both bands are producing moderate to heavy rain at this point. But look what's going on here north and west and really the lines set up yesterday afternoon. They really have not seen much of anything out here. The far western suburbs where South Jersey and Delaware have seen quite a bit of rain. Watch this when I flip it over to Doppler radar estimates here. Pottstown, maybe five hundredths of an inch. Lebanon, Redding, hardly a hundredth of an inch. So again, not much rain here, but you get into this green shade and all of a sudden you're talking about at least an inch of rain near Philadelphia. Glassboro 1.4, Smyrna 2.6. Tell you what, let's uh, drop this a little bit farther to the south and get into uh, Kent and Sussex counties in Delaware. Look at this, between Milford and Dover, 4.2, six inches of rain to the southwest of Milford, and you get into the villas in the Cape May area, they've picked up over four inches of rain with some of these outer bands. So uh, we've dodged a bullet overall, but you can see how heavy some of this rain was with Hurricane Matthew, and we missed out on all the real heavy rain that caused all the flooding down in the Carolinas and even southern portions of Virginia. So there's some good news there, and a lot of this is starting to work its way out to sea now. So here's the heaviest. We still have a little bit left over uh, across, let's say, areas just east of Baltimore and D.C., but the bulk of this is now starting to work its way out to sea. As the storm hits the coast and pushes east, the winds are going to start picking up. Right now, they're out of the northeast. They will switch out of the northwest this afternoon that dries everything out but they're going to be gusty we could see gusts as high as 45 miles per hour in all the counties that you see highlighted there so the wind advisory is up until 6 p.m. this afternoon the flash flood warning remains in effect for Kent County until 8 45 this morning temperatures are in the 50s throughout the area lots of clouds rain cooler numbers 47 in the Poconos Millville 58 Cape May about 59 satellite 6 along with action radar showing the remnants of Matthew right here the center of the storm is actually right about there just just east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. We're not dealing with storm surge flooding anymore. We're not dealing with tornadoes or anything like that. For the most part, this is just a shield of heavy rain working its way out to see drier conditions to the northwest. And you can see how quickly this is going to move over the next 12 to 24 hours. The sustained wind field was situated right there. And again, over the next 12 hours or so, it is way out to sea. It's actually so far out to sea, it's farther east than Ber uh, Bermuda, the island of Bermuda, uh, later this afternoon. Future Tracker 6, let's time it all out for you. 10 a.m., some leftover showers for South Jersey. Cloudy in the city, skies brightening up across the western suburbs. By 2 o'clock this afternoon, same thing, cloudy in Philadelphia, all areas south and east, brighter conditions north and west. Then by 4 or 5, that's when a lot of the viewing area starts to pick up some of that sunshine. And it's at that point where the temperatures really start to take a nose dive tomorrow morning how about 39 in Reading, 44 in Philadelphia and 48 in Wildwood. Probably going to be one of the coldest mornings that we've seen so far this season. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s today. Morning rain, some afternoon sun turning breezy and much, much cooler. You can see how things will clear out here by afternoon. Rainy during the morning, 1 o'clock 60, some sun 3, 5 o'clock 63 and 62. The exclusive Back with a seven day forecast, 63 degrees once again for tomorrow. Breezy and pleasant, lots of sunshine on Columbus Day. Tuesday's nice with a high of 65. Wednesday looks good, sun and cloud 67. Nice and tranquil for Thursday. Thursday's a really nice day, a little warmer with a high of 72. And even Friday and Saturday, it's just a perfect fall week here. Lots of sunshine and comfortable. Gorgeous. Beautiful. And it'll be okay for the Columbus Day parade. A lot of people are tweeting. A little damp, me. but no rain. Yes. Rain will be gone. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, it may not have been ideal conditions for a wedding, but a couple from Illinois had their destination wedding in Wilmington, North Carolina this weekend. Aww. Mandy and Michael Durr planned to say I do on Bald Head Island, but had to scrap those plans due to Hurricane Matthew, so they exchanged vows yesterday in nearby Wilmington. After the rain stopped during their reception, the wedding party went outside into the flooded streets, you can see. Mandy sees the storm as an obstacle the couple has already tackled successfully. And beautiful and unique wedding photos Indeed. to boot. A teacher from right here in Philadelphia has earned a coveted honor, the Milken Educator Award. It's often referred to as the Oscars of teaching. May I have the envelope, please? It's an award ceremony that played out just like Hollywood's biggest night. The only difference is the educator about to win doesn't even know she was nominated. And that teacher is... Jada Puglisi!
And you can see the emotion and sheer shock on Puglisi's face. Tears streaming, hugs and kisses flowing, and students swarming. Kind of like the media when the winner walks out on the red carpet. What makes me so shocked that it's equivalent for me to winning an Oscar as a teacher. Puglisi is a fifth grade science and math teacher at Andrew Jackson. Her students, not surprised, she was the winner. She's helpful and nice. And she's great too. Her prestigious Milk and Educator Award comes not only with honor and bragging rights, but a check too. The recipient of this award will receive a financial prize of this. Yep, $25,000 and it may come as no surprise how she plans to spend it on education. Puglisi had started her advanced degree at Holy Family University but put it on hold when funds got tight. All of my money is going to be going to me finishing my doctorate. Puglisi is going into her ninth year as a teacher, born and raised in South Philadelphia. She's the first in her family to graduate both high school and college. And her speech was kind of similar to one we might hear on Oscar night. I am so honored to be able to stand up here in front of you and just tell you that take your education seriously. When you get older, things like this can happen to you. Is she amazing? What a well-deserved honor. She's the first in her family to graduate from high school and college. And college. And then to get this award. That is amazing. And her mom is going back to school now, inspired by her. Ah, uh, inspired That's by her daughter. Great Love story. It. <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. Explore an entire a host its annual Columbus Day Parade. You can watch it live here on 6ABC this afternoon. The parade begins abroad in Morris Streets. It ends at Marconi Plaza with a festival celebrating Italian roots that goes on until 6 o'clock. It's a great event. They have food. They have entertainment. Everyone from the community comes down. Our coverage of the Columbus Day Parade begins at 1230 right after Action News at noon. I'll lead our coverage alongside Chickies and Pete's owner Pete Shiroki and Michael to Pilla. All right, Alicia, the hardest working woman in television, right? You're a too Grammy award-winning singer and songwriter will take center stage at the Kimmel Center. Karen Rogers has more in this week's 6ABC Loves the Arts. Four-time Grammy award-winning singer and songwriter Roseanne Cash has put out 15 albums in a career that has spanned nearly four decades. She's now on a nationwide tour for her latest album, and Philadelphia is the next stop. Roseanne Cash comes from an iconic country music family, and that's how she started her career in the late 1970s. She was known for her songwriting and performing in Nashville. She was a huge success there. But growing up in California, Cash said her influences were less Nashville and more the sounds of Americana music. Which is sort of like a mixture of folk and pop and country all together. She's now on tour, performing tracks from her three-time Grammy award-winning album, The River and the Thread. The River is basically the journey of her life, so it's uh, an interesting sort of a uh, song story of, of everything that's gone on. Fans can expect to hear classic hits as well as songs from the album like The Long Way Home and A Feather's Not a Bird. A feather's not a bird. It's not your standard pop song. It's something not very simple. She'll perform with a full band playing backup and with her husband and songwriting partner John Leventhal. So a lot of times we don't get the chance to see her perform with guitars and a whole accompaniment. And the show is said to be an intimate experience for concert goers. She's communicating in such an engaging way, it makes you listen and it, you can really enjoy it. If you just like a great evening of fantastic American music performed live on stage, it's really the music for you. Roseanne Cash performs at the Merriam Theater on October 20th at 8 p.m. For tickets, go to theartsinphilly.org or of course you can visit 6abc.com slash loves the arts for other area events. For 6abc loves the arts, I'm Karen Rogers. Fios is not cable. Hurricane Matthew moving out, right? Uh, moving out, yes. But you got to love uh, the way these tropical systems move. Remember yesterday, all the forecast models said, oh, this storm's going to make that right hand turn and maybe pull back to the Bahamas and Florida. Now look what they're doing. All of those models were wrong. <laughs> they're getting farther to the north now and working its way out to sea. As a result, it's adjusted a little bit farther to the north, and now we're seeing the heavy rain field here in the Philadelphia area. South Jersey and Delaware, some locations have picked up as much as four inches of rain this morning, mainly in Kent and Sussex County in Delaware, but even South Jersey has picked up anywhere from one to as much as three inches of rain. Here's the good news. The morning is wet, periods of rain, some of it heavy, but by afternoon the storm is pulling away. Clouds break for some sunshine. It turns breezy and cooler with highs only in the low 60s. So miserable this morning, 
much, much better later this afternoon. All right, yeah. Chris. <laughs> Thank you. It is now 7.55. We're just a few minutes away from saying good morning to Good Morning America. Here's a look ahead. Nydia and Alicia, good morning. Coming up on GMA, Donald Trump under siege. Top Republicans breaking rank, rebuking their nominee, withdrawing endorsements, some calling for him to withdraw from the election after that leaked 11-year-old videotape on which he makes lewd comments about women. What the Trump campaign is saying to his critics this morning, just hours before he's supposed to face off with Hillary Clinton for their second presidential debate. Our powerhouse political team covering all the angles right here this morning. Plus this morning, the other big story, North Carolina feeling Matthew's wrath, a deadly storm hammering the Tar Heel State with record-breaking rain, dumping nearly 15 inches in 24 hours. This while millions in Matthew's wake are recovering right now from power outages and flooding. We're going to be tracking the latest on Matthew from the storm zone itself, and it's all coming up on GMA on a very busy Sunday morning. We'll see you soon. Good Morning America Weekend is next on Channel 6. Action News continues a little later this morning. Here are some of the stories we're working on for you. Police in Delaware County search for the gunman who shot and killed a man in front of his own mother overnight. We're live with details. Plus, Delaware's flagship SPCA location is reopening its doors. Plus, Chris Sowers will have more in the exclusive Accu the Forecast. Now for Gray Hall, Alicia Vitarelli, Chris Sowers, and the entire Action News team. I'm Nidia Han. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you right back here at 9 a.m. When you were diagnosed